Hello gamers, I am here to give you a little update and show you a little bit about Windows 10. Um, the first thing I'm going to start off with is the Xbox app, which is a very new feature and a very helpful one for anybody that has an Xbox One. You can check out games um, and their achievements and everything like that. But the coolest thing is if your Xbox is on or in instant on mode, you could stream uh, your games directly to your PC. Now this game took a little longer to load than I thought it was going to and it wasn't the uh, the streaming service, it was the game itself. So I fast forwarded through that part of the video just so you didn't have to sit and watch that whole clip. Um, but Alright, so what we're going to get into here is just to show you the start of the game, just a teeny bit of it, um, to kind of show you how well and so far how precise it seems like the game are, uh, you know, the games are streaming through. Alright, so it's just like your Xbox. Alright, and with this part of the game, um, I'm testing the controls out, and the controls feel precise. It does exactly what I want it to do, when I want it to do it. There's no lag. I'm sure that depends probably on your network connection, um, but I have both my Xbox and my PC hooked up via wired uh, internet, so I don't know if that's a requirement or not. So when you're streaming, if you go up top, um, hover up top of the mouse, it will bring up the uh, the uh, bar so you can exit out. Then that was a digital game. So the next thing I wanted to show you was a disc-based game. So if the disc is in the system, you can click on it, and it doesn't take too long to load the information. Um, you can go through the you know the captures and the achievements and stuff like that if you want to while you're waiting um, but when you give it a second the little play streaming will uh, show up and the other game was still technically playing it hadn't shut off because I hadn't shut it off so it was telling me that somebody else might be playing a game and it would kick them out uh, which is what it does alright and so this is a disc based game And as you can see, this one starts up much quicker um, as a very small loading screen compared to the Tembo game. And of course, nobody apparently likes to have the skippable beginning screens anymore. So once it loads, Now, and why it's loading, I'm going to explain uh, a little bit after I show the Xbox app. I am going to show you a lot of the different features, um, the mails, the apps, uh, older programs, and uh, items like that. But I'm just kind of showing you the streaming stuff first, since, um, I don't know, since this is a game channel and I'm a gamer. Alright, so you can choose, it, it chooses just like if you were playing on the Xbox. Um, and then once it loads up again, I will be showing you the controls just to kind of show you how reactive they seem to be. Alright, so this part right here, um, it says what it's su supposed to say, it does what it's supposed to do, uh, all in the time that it's supposed to do it. Um, if I didn't know I was on Xbox, I probably, or if I didn't know I was streaming it, I would have probably thought I was actually on the Xbox. So the little buttons at the top um, do little different features. 
So if you hit the Xbox button, it goes to your Xbox home screen. And I was trying to figure out how to get back. So then I was like, well, it's like an Xbox, so what if I use the control to get back? And it does. And from what I can see is when you're streaming, you don't have to stream it just for that one game. You can go into different items while you're streaming uh, because it's streaming your, your whole Xbox dashboard. So then I opened the game back up. I wanted to check on some of these other items that were at the top, which I did. And as you can see, it opened up the little... Uh, thing down in the left hand corner that tells you the speed that you're streaming at um, you know what it takes to run the game that particular game um, and as you can see it's quite a bit but it's also you know it's HD that's streaming across your internet alright and I was doing a test here to see if it dropped you know, anywhere or drastically went up or anything like that. And it does look like it's a little bit higher when you're in game uh, than when you're, say, the dashboard, but, you know, that's par for the course. As you can see over there that I had just popped up, you can show the different, um, you know, you can choose what you want to show in that little, that little screen down on the left. So there's the Xbox app. Uh, next, I'll show you Steam. I never reloaded Steam. This is the upgrade version of Windows 10, so everything, you know, came up on its own. So it reloaded that. Um, and this is the App Store. Everything on Windows 10, um, I'm guessing like Windows 8, is considered an app. Even older programs are considered app. But what it does is it makes the app or the uh, program mimic an app. So it acts, you can do the same things as apps, but it runs concurrently with the uh, with the apps. Um, as you can see, it has the file explorer like Windows 7 had. Uh, this is the new Edge browser. Um, it's replacing Internet Explorer. And while it takes some getting used to, um, once I got used to it, it seems basically like what Internet Explorer is now. Um, could probably is a little faster than Internet Explorer was. As you can see, it's it's a quick, snappy um, browser. That could also be the speed boost from, you know, Windows 10 itself, because everything seemed to boot, or not boot, but everything seemed to uh, be quicker. Booting, turning off, opening apps. And, all right. Next, I'm going to show you that the same thing here is with the last one. Was Google Chrome opened up. Um, it was already installed. It already kept it kept all of my uh, bookmarks, all my favorites, and uh, I didn't have to reload any of those. I didn't have to re-log into anything. It saved all my passwords uh, that I had saved to it. Um, and your P PC may be quicker than this, or it may not be quicker than this. That all depends on whether you have... I'm using a, a solid-state hard drive, so it goes a little quicker. Alright, and it has a mail app that you can sign in to your Yahoo, your Gmail, your Hotmail, or you can enter your own email. Um, it's got a search bar, which right there I made a mistake of just typing Google and hitting enter. I type Google and it, you can open Chrome or type Google and it searches the web google.com and Google Chrome is my default that's why it's opening it from that whatever is your default it will open from that um, and it's also got Cortana which I don't have a microphone uh, set up on it yet so I couldn't use it um, but as far as I know it works just like Android and Apple phones do so this is probably my favorite feature is that they took the Windows 8 app styles and put them into the right hand side of the start menu. Um, this right here is showing that music, this is the music player that comes with it now. Windows Media Player doesn't come built in anymore. Alright.
And as you can see, this is just the Amazon app. It opens quickly and it scrolls like the tiles did on Windows 8. And this is the new image viewer. Um, I'm not sure if it used it in Windows 8 or not. I actually bumped up from Windows 7. So, alright, and I wanted to show you one of the, this is one of the game apps that, I mean, I have it on my iPhone, and I know people that have had it on their phones, but it's interesting that you can now play it uh, in-game, and you unlock achievements that go towards your Xbox gamer score. And as you can see, I have the Windows Media Player. Um, that's because it transferred over because I had it installed in Windows 7, or Windows 7, and it still works. Um, I opened up my video software to show that that came through. And they haven't had an update for the, uh, the Video Suit X7 for a while, because I believe they're on 8 or 9 now. So they, don't, they didn't do anything that's compatible, you know, compatibility with this. But Windows 7 is supposed to... It's supposed to be Windows 7. Anything that's Windows 7 or Windows 8 should open here. Alright, and this is your new app, Marketplace. Anything that you've rented over Xbox will show up in this. Or you can add your own videos to use it as a video player. Alright, and then I've got the video apps down here. Uh, just showing like how Netflix loads up on the video app. And as you can see, it loads up pretty quickly. Has your tile-based stuff. Uh, probably shows a little bit more in the Windows as uh, than you know the web-based one does. And then I put my drives into tiles. Uh, these tiles are completely customizable. You can go, you know, small tiles, medium tiles, large tiles, and extra large tiles, I guess. Um, and then you can move them around to any position that you want to within it. So when it first, when you first set it up, it looks uh, a lot like Windows 8 dashboard did on the right hand side, but just that little small side. And as you can see, everything's easy to move, easy to customize. You can rename them, uh, the different sections, if you want to, to make it easier for you to find what you're looking for, because you can have a large bar so you can scroll down, it'll be almost like another screen. Alright, and the top part is your most used apps, just like before, and your logout features. Alright, and then it's got the uh, the file explorer again, and start menu, and it's got your settings which are why they look different on that screen um, overall they're not any different uh, they probably actually have are a little bit easier because instead of now having checkboxes and stuff like that they tend to have sliders uh, it just tends to be based more on ease and uh, it it's basically looks like it tries to show you everything Alright, and as you can see, apps are set up. Um, Windows 7 didn't have them set up like this. Apparently Windows 8 did where they sort them out in alphabetic order um, and label the alphabet, uh, which is a really nice feature. That was one problem I've always had with Windows was that why they were in alphabetic order. You know, if you're trying to scroll quickly, you can't find it. Uh, so if you right-click on the Start menu, it's got your features like your search, your run um, your file explorer and I believe this one was the task manager yep task manager um, and as you can see it's got all the normal stuff that a task manager would but what I liked about it is that it gave you more information in the uh, in the performance section, um, you know, it told you not, it, it didn't just tell you 90% of your CPU used or something, it tells you the gigahertz, it tells you how much memory you're using, how much you have left. Um, it just seems to give you a little bit more information on all your 
your items. So it's got your command prompt that's still in there. And um, this is the disk management, which took a little bit to open. Um, but it did the same thing on Windows 7 because it's got to read all your disks and, and check them. Alright, it's got your network settings. I'm guessing if you have wireless, that's probably where you find your wireless settings too. Your device manager. Um just your overall computer status of showing you what exactly you have on your windows or what type of windows I should say you have and the items you have and I had to get used to right clicking on that as you can see uh, it's got your normal control panel type stuff. And then it's got your uninstall, uh, well, they call it programs features, but uninstall basically. All right, your system tray is basically the same uh, with the little arrow, has your, all your apps running. Um, then it's got your network, this is about the same. Um, it comes pre-installed with the Microsoft OneDrive. Um, and then it's got this little uh, indicator over here that shows you basically all the uh, the things that have happened over a certain amount of time like if you've gotten warnings or as you can see um, Facebook status um, items like that uh, it's got your where you can set up your VPNs your settings um, you set up your location settings you can set up uh, what they call quiet mode which means it won't give you any warnings on it it will it'll do the warnings but it won't sound off or anything and the calendar uh, the calendar is the it's nice that they've actually got not got that little white calendar in there anymore so alright that's the review of Windows 10 or I should say just showing you the Windows 10 uh, everything that I've seen on Windows 10 so far runs much better than Windows 7 and is much better um, for keyboard and mouse users than Windows 8 was. So it's you know kind of the best of both worlds. So if you liked Windows 7 uh, but you didn't like Windows 8, you'll really like this one. Um, if you really really liked Windows 8, you can change it to tablet mode and it switches the screen over to tablet mode. Now this Windows will also work on uh, Windows or this Windows will work on the uh, Windows phones, tablets, um, PCs, laptops and what they're trying to do is they're trying to make all of the Windows devices run off the same thing. Uh, so like if I had a I don't know, a, a Microsoft Surface Pro and I wanted to stream my games from my Xbox. I could hook up a controller to the Surface and do exactly what I did on here and stream my Xbox One through my tablet. Um, so it shows huge potential um, and so far is working fairly bug free. I've had a little bit of trouble in the apps um, but not a whole lot. It's more of that today's release day and everybody's on so all right if you like my video please give the thumbs up down below and remember to subscribe to my channel and if you'd like to see anything else uh, electronics or video games reviewed in the future just leave me a comment down below thank you